Hi everyone, my name is Rory Yakubov and I'm an algebra and geometry teacher at Oldbridge High School in New Jersey. This is a complete parent's guide to get you set up on Quizlet, get your students, your children set up on Quizlet so that they're accessing all the good information that they need and some easy ways for you to check in on your children to make sure that they are using Quizlet to the best of their ability. So I, um, like I mentioned, I am a math teacher myself. I've been teaching for 15 years and I have to say over the last four years of using Quizlet in my classroom, having my students use Quizlet in my classroom and outside of my classroom has made an incredible impact such an impact that I know my students are able to study so well in class, but at home. And as a parent, it's always really important. We wanna know, you know, how can our students study? How can our children study? I know I keep calling them students because I'm thinking on my end, but as a parent, you would wanna know, you know, is your child getting enough information? Are they studying? Are they creating their own study resources or maybe sharing study resources between each other? So this quick video today is going to show you how you can get started and then once you get the ball rolling with your child on Quizlet, you can just keep on going. Now I just went to simplyquizlet.com and so students can go to quizlet.com on a website. Um, they can also go onto the app and just simply download the app and log in that way. Now I have a login of course, but I'm just going to show you how easy it is to sign up. So you would have your child go click sign up here. I'm just gonna move my screen. If your child already has a Google account or has Facebook, then they'd be able to log in through that. Otherwise, logging in is pretty simple. They just need to put in their birth date, a username. Make sure your child picks a username that they're gonna definitely wanna keep for a while so they don't have to really change it later. Also a username that they're going to remember. You may want to, as a parent, jot down the username in case your child forgets what the login is. An email, it's up to you whether or not your child has a personal email account or you wanna put in their school email account or even your email account. So that depends on what kind of setup. And then of course a password. So whenever I have my personal students make a Quizlet account, I always ask them to put you know, their username and their password somewhere safe so that they don't lose it. You know, Write it down in a notebook, put it in their agenda, maybe stick it on a post-it note with some other passwords somewhere and then totally sign in. Now, once your child signs in, you're gonna see that they have access to so much. So now I'm gonna log in with my username here. You're gonna see what my Quizlet account as a teacher looks like. At, for a student, it looks definitely different. It's not gonna look exactly like this. Um, because they haven't created study sets yet, unless you are a parent of a child who already has Quizlet and you're kind of just here for this video to see what's up. Now, as a teacher, I have my account, it's Yakubov Math, and currently, like I mentioned, I'm teaching Algebra 1 and Geometry. So if you were to go to quizlet.com slash Yakubov Math, your child who has a Quizlet account can actually access all of the reviews and information that I already have built up for the entire school year. And I'm always adding and editing and um, putting more to things as well. So this is actually a great resource for, again, any of you Algebra 1 or Geometry students. But if your child is not currently in those classes and you are looking for other things, um, you can always, when the child is in Quizlet, click on search. And pretty much anything you can imagine that a child may need to study is already probably made. And that study set can actually be used for practice or um, you know, edited to what you want. So for example, let's say your child um, was looking to study uh, solving equations. You can see that if the child clicks on this, account, this uh, study set, which has 201 terms, by the way, that's 201 problems. Probably not are gonna do all 201, but that's okay. Um, it doesn't really matter as long as they get good practice in. They would be able to click on one of these sets and it's going to bring them to so many different options for studying. This one's just taking a while to load because you know it's 200 problems. So first off, there are virtual flashcards. Um, you know, I'm 36 years old. Even I was making tons of flashcards. Parents all over the world, we were making tons of flashcards if you were really trying to study well back in school. And you know, you would put the definition on one side of the card and you'd flip it over and there would be um, the term or vice versa. You'd write the term and the definition. Well, Quizlet is basically virtual flashcards and it's all here. So if I was to click on flashcards, let's say I'm a student, I'm going into this study set and I want to learn, you know, to do solving equations by flashcards. 
what the child will see is they will see a problem here. Two added to three times the number, M, is the same as 18. And this would have been something where they needed to translate it. But what you'll see here, it says click card to see term. So this, after it's translated, if they click on the screen, it'll actually translate it for them. What's also nice is that it will actually read it out loud. Um, 3M plus 2 equals 18. And it will read what was on the other side as well. 2 added to 3 times the number M is the same as 18. So you can imagine, you know, if a child feels like it's helpful to have it read to them, they have access to that. Now, and then there's a little arrow here and they can just arrow through and go through all of the problems. So these are flashcards again, and they can click, they can see how they're doing. They can shuffle the flashcards. So let's say, you know, there's a lot of translating in the beginning here, but if I click shuffle, then I'm gonna get other problems. And this happens to be a percent of change problem. They would do the problem, click on the screen, and then they would get their result, their answer. So flashcards is a really good option. Again, it's basically just a virtual option of paper, you know, index card flashcards that we would have made. Now for me as a teacher, when I'm encouraging students to practice, I generally, for whatever reason, learn is my go-to. I prefer learn over flashcards only because it creates multiple choice for um, your children. So if they were picking up a Quizlet study set and they said they had to solve this equation, two times the absolute value of X plus three equals 18. They would do all their work on a piece of paper or a dry erase board, and then they would go ahead and they would click on their answer. So let's see. Um, and let's just say I clicked on the wrong answer. They would be able to see what the correct answer was supposed to be, okay, and vers versus what they actually said. Now, here's what's really interesting about Learn, and a few things I do basically for setup. I'm gonna just click on to continue. Is that um, you'll see how many cards are in the set. Familiar and known well. So when a card goes to familiar, so let's say I was to solve this equation, and I know the answer is uh, negative six. They get it correct. Notice that question then went from remaining to familiar. When they see that question again, because it'll randomly show up again, and they get it right for a second time, it goes into known well. So again, so look at this. If I subtract 16, get negative 10, x is two. So that problem now went to familiar. 25% as a decimal is 0.25. So you can see students are getting instant feedback. I'm just gonna scroll down, solve the proportion. Now I'm just gonna purposely get this wrong. I'm gonna click on 43. You see it says study this one. Um, it tells what the correct answer was supposed to be and what the child said. And you'll notice that it didn't go anywhere. It actually just stays in this remaining. So as a parent, you can say, hey, let me see how you're studying so far. And you can actually see how many problems they've done in Learn, which is why I like it a lot. Um, you know, if there was, let's say 40 total problems in the set and you saw your child had 10 in familiar and 30 in known well, well, those 30 that were in known well, that means I answered them right twice which shows a pretty high you know, success rate of them actually knowing the material. So um, if your child is you know, using other Quizlet study sets, finding them, like let's say I was to go into search and I wanted to type in biology. Uh, there's so many teachers that have public accounts on Quizlet like I do, and they would be able to share them. So you can see there's so many different uh, sets of um, study sets here. You might say, oh, you know what, an intro to biology, and you might click on it and say, this is exactly what I'm learning. And as a student, maybe this is exactly what I need to study. When you click on someone's study set, you can also scroll down and actually see what all of the terms in the study set are in advance. So, you know, you can say, hey, this looks really good. This is exactly what I need. The other thing that's also really good is if a child wants to use this study set, maybe add it to their own account, they can go here and they can click edit, okay? And if they click edit, they would be able to use this study set, change it to what they needed.
So if a student looked at this study set and said, you know what, most of those terms look good, but I kind of need to make it my own. If they hover over the triple dots, they can click on customize. Customize means it's going to make a duplicate copy and that copy is going to get saved onto the child's account. Um, and look, they actually can open up the study set and this is how this, the teacher that made this study set, uh, this is what it looks like. And a student can actually go in they can delete any of the problems that they don't want, any of the terms and definitions. They can actually, at the end, add a card and add in their brand new own vocabulary terms. And then once they hit create, that study set gets saved right into the student account and they can study right from it. So I also want to show you as a parent, you know, how simple it is for a child to really create a study set. And honestly, I actually created a Quizlet account for my own five-year-old daughter. She's in kindergarten and um, I made really simple study sets for her. So far I've made two and she's been able to practice off them beautifully. The first study set I made for her was I matched capital letters with lowercase letters. Uh, and that was really fun to make because obviously it's really easy and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to make a Quizlet study set. But what I did was I just simply matched up a capital letter and a lowercase letter and I did all 26 cards I set up for her. And then she went into the Quizlet study set and then she did learn. So she did the multiple choice option, which was really cool. There are so many other options for studying that I didn't review with you. So I'm gonna make sure after we create the study set that I show you what the other study options are and how your child can actually show you how they're doing when they're studying. So if I wanted to make a really simple study set, I'm just gonna call it solving equations. Every time I make some sample study sets, this is always what I go to. It's like so basic for a, te a math teacher. Okay, so I have to delete this because this is actually something old I typed in. But when you go to create a new study set, it's gonna ask you to make a title. So you would just go ahead and make a title. Um, if you're doing vocabulary words for a study set, it says to put the term here on the left, so like the vocabulary word, and then the definition on the right. So as a parent, you might be like, you know what, I really wanna help my child out. I want to make a study set for them. I have their list of you know, vocab words for English and I'm gonna go ahead and make a set. Or I wanna really show my child. You might be like, I wanna show my child how easy it is to make a study set and I'm gonna start this with them and then they're gonna just be able to run with it and go. So um, the only difference is for math problems, if you were making a math study set, you have to put the problem on the right there where it says definition, and then the solution actually goes there on the left. So um, again, if you're doing vocabulary terms, this won't be an issue, but you can see how easy it is for me to just type in an answer, a problem and an answer. If I wanted to do term and definition, I would say a solution and the definition to the solution is the value of the variable that makes a true statement. So if you were doing math problems, you have to put the problem where the definition is and then the answer where term is. But if you're just making a simple Quizlet study set of just vocabulary terms, then that's how it would be set up. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to add in some extra cards here as I talk you through this. You can also see above, you've got options for highlighting, bold, italics, underline. You can actually also add in images. That's with a paid account. So if your child's making some study sets, they would need to get the pro, uh, the plus account for the student, and they would be able to add in images, which as a teacher, I add in images of like graphs and tables, and that's always super helpful. If your child's in a class where, you know, pictures are really important, like I think of always bio and how many diagrams there are, that would be super helpful as well. So I'm just gonna add in a bunch of problems. You can see how this is going. I'll also throw in some random vocab. So I will say um, the less than symbol, less than, I might say, you know what, I wanna make sure my students know that this is the greater than symbol. Let's see what other random things I could do. Some, some is the, um, answer to an addition. Now look what's also pretty cool here, guys. You notice as I'm typing it in, there's so many other people that also have made the term sum and they matched it up to these definitions. I could actually just steal up someone else's definition that they used. Uh, so you can see how easy it is to set this up for sure. The answer, look, the answer to a division problem already done for me. 
As you can imagine, any vocab word or definition that a student might be studying, there's so many other students that have already made a Quizlet study set with that answer in it. So I'm gonna do difference, the answer to a subtraction problem. And let me just throw one more in here, product. And that's the answer to a multiplication problem. Okay, so let's say I put in 10 cards that I wanted to study here, and now I'm gonna click create. So after I click create, um, this study set, and this is kind of, this is on the teacher end, so this won't be something that affects a student, that won't pop up, but they create the study set. Now I already showed you a student would be able to study it using flashcards, they'd be able to study it using Learn, and there's also options with Learn where, you know, students could do multiple choice, they could do type in the answer, um, you can mix and match things. Writing, I don't usually go for. That's really maybe if you um, have to be really, really careful with the spelling of words. You may want to have your, your children study that way. Spelling, I don't do too much, but test is great, especially for parents. Because, you know, we want children to practice what it feels like to take a quiz or a test at home before they really take one uh, with their teacher. So you just watched me put those 10 problems in. Okay, problem, answer, problem, answer. So when you click on test, when your child clicks on test, and they go to this, look what happened. You saw ex exactly what I did. I just put in 10 you know, problems and answers or terms and definitions, and Quizlet already designed this test for me. Three written questions, three matching questions, two multiple choice questions, and two true-false questions. And that's only with me entering in 10 problems. If I put in 20 questions, it would have so many more of each um, type of set. There might be five written questions or five matching. So I'm gonna show you what this would look like if I was to go ahead and answer this as a student. Um, and you know, put symbols in and answer. So product is the answer to a multiplication problem. Quotient is the answer to a division. Look how I, when I use them, they go gray. So again, that helps a child be able to see like, okay, I've already used that answer. The answer to an addition problem is supposed to be sum. I'm gonna mark it wrong just so you can see what ends up happening. Um, X plus three equals six. That is X equals three. It's funny how it put a picture of a graph in there. The value of the variable that makes a true statement is called the solution, that is true. And is that the less than symbol? That is false. So when I click check answers, it's gonna tell me each one in order, how I got it correct. There were 10 problems, remember I purposely got one wrong, that's why it's telling me my grade of a 90. So you can imagine as a parent, if you say, hey, I want you to study, can you go do that study set for your class and do, go run a test, show me your grade when you're done, you know, your child can say, hey, I got a 90, mom, dad, aunt, uncle, grandma, grandpa, whoever's home, and they can even see which one they got wrong and what the correct answer was supposed to be, which was this one here. Now, I just wanna show you really quickly, if I go back and I go back to that study set that we created, and I say, you know what? I got a 90 on my last try, look, it even keeps it here for you. So if a, your child exits out of it and they go, oh, I don't remember what I got, it's right here. But if I click on test again, like a brand new click, I just clicked on test. Look, these are three brand new written questions, three different matching questions. It completely reshuffles and gives you brand new problems. So you can imagine what a great resource that is to say, you know what, I'm gonna go through and practice test a few times until I get it exactly where I need to be. So it is super quick for your child to set up a Quizlet account. You can help them if you wanted to. It's super easy to search and find another set that someone else has made and use that and even edit it to um, study with. Or a student can just even make their own or you can help make a study set along with them. I hope this was helpful for you as a parent. If you have any questions ever, you can always comment below on this post and we will respond. Or you can reach out to me on my Instagram account, which is I teach algebra. Again, on Instagram, I'm at I teach algebra. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.